Green Stuff Whirl Rollers. Now I'm sure every single one of you have heard of them and I'm sure quite a lot of you have used them. I've had them on the wish list for quite a long time and the other week I finally pulled the trigger and uh, I picked myself up a few. There's them and there's them and also this one. Now I've always wanted one and I've also always wanted to make my own textured rollers which I will do at some point probably using Neil from Real Terrain Hobbies Technique. I've bought some of the stuff for it, but just haven't got around to it yet. But yeah, these are the original. I don't know if they are the original, but they are certainly considered the best. This one here is the small bricks one. Now the reason why I have bought so many is I've bought some for one to 35 or 28 millimeter ish, one to 50 actually, and some for my 20 millimeter, roughly one to 70 second. 176 scale because I do both scales <laughs> so I've bought some for one scale and some for another what I thought I'd do is a quick video showing my initial impressions as I make use of them for the first time and see whether I like them or not whether I've wasted my money or whether I would recommend them so I'm gonna switch this camera around I'm gonna point it at the bench and I'm gonna roll out some bricks hello and welcome to Beard Clever voiceover again as I forgot to turn my microphone off so what we have here is some very old air drain clay and I'm about to have a go at using this for the first time. So I don't know how well it's going to turn out at this point and as I record this voiceover I can tell you that I should have used newer clay. But anyway we move on. What we have here are the tools that I use for working with clay. I have my normal rolling pin, a wooden rolling pin board which I will want to upgrade at some point to glass and the Green Stuff World roller that we're going to be testing out. The Green Stuff World roller, when I ordered it, came with a bunch of these rings which do allow you to roll to a specific thickness of the clay. I think with good clay that would work very, very well. With this clay it was a little bit more questionable. So what I'm going to do is I'm putting the rings on the end of the rolling pin so that when I do press it down it never goes any any thinner than that, that's a really simple but a good idea, but yeah, then it, it's worth doing. So when you're working with air dry clay and when you're working particularly on a wooden board, you want to make sure that you keep everything very, very wet because it sticks. And even when you do this, it still sticks. I wet everything very carefully, as you can see, and then make use of my normal rolling pin to try to get the clay just that little bit thinner. This doesn't work as well because as I've said before this actual clay has been in the packet for quite a long time and it's a bit dry and crumbly and rubbish. Um, I probably have had it unopened in my drawer for about two and a half or three years because I just never got around to using it. And here you can see some of the difficulty you have working with it and working on wood. It really does just like to adhere to the surface below and this becomes quite a problem. So what I've done here is just a bit off camera to go and get a tool that I can use to lift the clay off of the wood and turn it over in attempts to continue to roll it out, which doesn't work very well as you can see. However, it is what it is and I use the materials that I had at hand and next time I go to the shop which sells this stuff, which is not close to where I live, I'll be picking some more new um, air dry clay up which is terracotta which is what this is because it's really really good for the roller for the bricks as you'll see because this isn't a total loss so now that we've got this down to a thickness that's relatively close to where the roller is going to press to what I'm doing is I'm rolling backwards and forwards and I'm putting quite a lot of pressure on you need to really press down with these rollers they're not something that you can just um, kind of lightly press on. You, ne you need to give some good regular, good even pressure across the whole thing. But what happens is, is amazing. I mean, that is absolutely fantastic if it does focus in. It just, it just works so well. I was very impressed with the first use of this. Notwithstanding terrible materials and not having a very good um, board to actually roll on. So that's my first ever attempt at rolling with a rolling pin. What I'm now doing is trying again, but with badly positioned camera, which shortly I will notice and zoom out. Um, 
this is one of the problems with covering your hands in clay and trying to work with a camera. You don't really want to touch it with your clay hands. So off I go, wash my hands and hopefully come back in a second and adjust the camera so that I'm actually in shot. While I'm waiting, I'll tell you that you really do need to be careful with your cleaning of these. So I've got a old um, toothbrush and what I've just done there while I was off camera is taken the toothbrush and cleaned out all of the little cracks and everything. It doesn't take very long, warm water helps, um, but do clean your tools regularly, otherwise you'll end up with um, clagged up and not very good uh, results when you're actually pressing down. So my second ever attempt live on camera is going on in front of you right now and once again it's going very well and probably slightly better this time because I'm doing a slightly more even pressure but you can see just how dirty the uh, rolling pin does get while you're doing this. Um, so yeah it's, uh, it is an issue but it cleans up very nicely and right now it's sat in its little tube um, and is completely and utterly clean with no problems at all. So there you are, that's uh, voiceover beard done. Um, I will now, um, I will stop this voiceover now and we will carry on with the video. Thank you voiceover beard for pulling my ass out the fire once more. I will get better at remembering to turn my microphone on, I promise. So what is my evaluation of that? What do I feel the next day? Let me show you the outcome of the actual making. So what we have here, what I have here is the four now sections of air dry clay that I have pressed the rolling pin into and I'll take some good pictures and I will post them up after the end of the blog so you can actually see but to summarize the the, the results are very very good the, the problems that I've had have come with the materials that I used I'm not blaming the tool at all it's me I had old clay that wasn't really re ready or prepared or good for this and so yeah with with new clay that that wasn't crumbly and old I think the, the results would be even better but based on the fact that it is using such old clay it's quite amazing how well it's come out. Talking about cleaning the rolling pin this is the one that I used and yeah it's it's just absolutely spot on it's perfect. So yeah, very, very pleased indeed with how well that cleans up. How I made use of the tool might also be an issue. So actually rolling it out flat, trying to then um, leave it to dry before I made use of it, it's a bit of an odd thing. Where I've seen people use this more is where you apply the clay to a surface and then roll a pin it on once it's been applied. That's how maybe I would be able to use the slabs a little bit more efficiently. But bricks, it's a bit odd, isn't it? They're upright and you, you know you, you you want to roll you want to get a section that's the right size for the uh, for the for the job that you're making the bricks for and so I don't know that's something for me to explore anyway what do you think about these have you got them please do let me know in the comments below if you do and if you have any hints and tips as to how I can do better with my use of them because I have a few and I want to use them a lot I think they're going to really improve my my modeling and the output that I create so it remains only for me to say that if you're not yet a subscriber, please do subscribe. I do love to see those numbers go up and it is awesome to know there's so many of you interested in the videos I am creating. And don't forget to ding the bell so that you are told whenever one of these videos goes live. And last, but by no means least, thank you very much for watching Beard Clipper.